For over 200 years, limestone from the hills of southern Indiana has changed the face of American architecture. A little history of Indiana limestone to start with is that the deposit, which stretches about 67 miles from the northwest to the southeast through south central Indiana, is a sedimentary deposit of sea creatures. So over 300 million years old, and it's a really vast and, and uniform deposit, which is what makes it unique. The uh, Indiana region, the stone here was really exposed when the ice flows moved down, you know, millions of years ago, stopped in around Martinsville, and all of that water and, and melting came down and, and exposed a lot of the stone, which made it accessible. Limestone became a popular building material for Indiana's earliest pioneers. By 1827, Richard Gilbert established the state's first organized quarry, located near Steinsville, about 14 miles from Bloomington. The quarry provided limestone for many local projects, including the Tippecanoe and Vigo County courthouses. So around the early 1800s, you had people starting to settle in this area. A lot of the stone that they pulled it initially was for cabin sills and steps and and you know uh, basic uh, building blocks that they used uh, early on. Since that time uh, the demand for Indiana limestone became very prevalent. Uh, 1850s they started moving a lot of rail systems down in, into the belt. The industry doubled and then redoubled again between around 1890 and 1910 when you had the advent of a lot of urban building so building codes changed and the use of more uh, fire resilient building materials became uh, more of a demand. And fortunately for our industry, the early founders realized that and uh, the demand for the stone just kept increasing and increasing. As architectural demand for limestone grew, Indiana companies responded. Between 1889 and 1895, the number of quarries doubled. By 1900, Indiana limestone represented a third of the nation's limestone industry, with over 50 companies represented in southern Indiana. A lot of what really helped, I think, bolster the industry was there was a lot of immigration going on. Uh, the Italians obviously have a tremendous resource of experienced carvers. Uh, there were folks coming in from Ireland and Scotland that also had good experience working with stone. You know, stone is really the, the primary building uh, material universally. And, and so every region has its experts in, in stone carving and, and cutting and those kinds of techniques, uh, especially in, in European communities. And so they have a history of, of those expertise. So when they came over here to look for a, a different life or a better life, obviously it brought with them a lot of their skills and, and trade. With the influx of skilled labor and productivity, demand for Indiana limestone skyrocketed. By 1920, Indiana's production represented 80% of the nation's output. Noted for its superior weather resistance and quality, Indiana limestone became the favored building block for the nation's most iconic 20th century projects. You know, we have a lot of notable uh, projects that, you know, historically we can point to and, and most people know what they are. Uh, the Empire State Building is built with Indiana limestone. The Pentagon, you know, another project back in the day built in 40 to about 41 over about 16 months. You know, for decades that's been the largest uh, office building in the world. Also, the U.S. National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Uh, is entirely clay with Indiana limestone. That project spans a fifth of a mile, I believe. So, you know, there's been a lot of really neat projects built with the stone. Throughout the 20th and 21st century, Indiana limestone remained a favorite building material across the nation. Today, there are nine active quarries in southern Indiana with nearly 2.7 million cubic feet of Indiana limestone quarried each year. One reason for its continued popularity is its reputation for versatility. Indiana limestone is a freestone, which means that it has no preferential direction of splitting. This allows the stone to be planed, turned on a lathe, and even handcrafted, making it a perfect choice for architects and artisans alike. There's a, a sculptor here locally in Bloomington, Amy Breyer, 
who has uh, done works all over the country. And she trained in Italy. She trained with a lot of master carvers, and now she is a master carver. Uh, she's done a, a, a great deal of public works around uh, Bloomington and elsewhere. Uh, at the psych building at IU, there's a big sculpture of a brain. Amy carved that, and it's an anatomically correct rendition of a brain. Artists like Amy, who create and design and sculpt as well and, and start from the ground up with those works. They come and they work with Indiana Limestone and they're like, wow, this is like carving in butter. In Bloomington in particular, I think it's extremely important to us as a community to continue uh, building with Indiana Limestone. As much as people may not recognize it sometimes, uh, that's what Bloomington is known for. Indiana Limestone and, and IU really grew up together, and they grew this town together. Indiana Limestone is truly the foundation of this community, along with IU and these other companies. It, it promotes our industry, it promotes our community, and, our, and it promotes our sense of community as well.